All right, so let's go straight into some questions using the midpoint theorem. We are asked to find X and Y, and we've got a little diagram that's drawn for us. All right, so if you have a look in this diagram, we've got no Y, we've only got X, okay? So using the midpoint theorem, guys, you'll see we've got a few things going on here. We know we don't have sides in that, but we can see these two equal signs here that tells you that this is the midpoint of this tri uh, oh, let's call this A, B, C, and let's call that D and E. All right, so D is the midpoint of A, B, and E is the midpoint of B, C. Okay, now how do we go, go about solving this? Remember, we're looking for X. Now, since we know that D is the midpoint of A, B, and E is the midpoint of BC, because that's given to you, all right? So we can say, therefore, ED must be equal to a half of AC. Now, remember with geometry, it's very, very important when you set out your proof to give a reason. So the reason I can say ED is equal to a half AC, we can say that's because of the midpoint theorem. Okay, you need to give a reason that backs up your statement. Okay, so this is our proof. So we know that ED is equal to a half of AC. Now, we don't have any other information. We've got side AB and we've got side BC. We don't have side AC. But if you notice, in triangle ABC, we have a 90 degree. So that means we're dealing with a right angle triangle. So therefore, we can say in triangle A, B, C, from Pythagoras, we know that A, C squared is equal to B, C squared plus A, B squared. And the reason there, that's just straight from Pythagoras. All right. We know that B, C is 8, so we're going to have 8 squared plus 6 squared, 8 squared is 64, plus 36, and 64 plus 36 gives us 100. So therefore, AC will be the square root of 100, and the square root of 100 is 10. Okay, so therefore AC is 10 units. So we know now that the whole length of AC is 10 units, but remember we're looking for ED, so how do we find ED or X? Well, we know that X is going to be equal to a half of 10. And the reason for that, again, is the midpoint theorem. So therefore, X is going to be a half times 10, which is 5. All right, so we had to state a few things first here. We had to say, since this point D was the midpoint of AB, since E was the midpoint of BC, and we know that uh, if that's the midpoint and that's the midpoint, then from the midpoint theorem, DE must be parallel to AC. And we also know that DE must be equal to a half AC. So those are just concepts that came straight from identifying the midpoint theorem once you've got the midpoint theorem, then it's simply a matter of application. All right, let's have a look at another example where we need to use the midpoint theorem. Okay. Again, we're looking for X and Y. All right, so if you have a look at this diagram, PST is your triangle. We've got point Q is the midpoint of PS, and we've got R is the midpoint of PT, okay? So we also know that QR will then be parallel to ST, but how can we state that? Well, it follows from the midpoint theorem. So let's set this up. We can say, since Q is the midpoint of PS and R is the midpoint of PT, right? Therefore, Q 
QR will be parallel to ST and QR will be equal to a half of ST. And all of this follows just because it is the midpoint theorem. Okay, so that comes straight from the midpoint theorem. Okay, now remember, because we have the length of QR, we know that QR is 14, so therefore ST, so we can go from that step, we'll say, well, QR is 14, and that's going to be equal to a half of ST, and remember, ST was given as X, so 14 is equal, uh, equal to a half of X, so therefore x must be equal to, we divide both sides by a half, 14 divided by a half, tip and times, so we get x is equal to 28. So therefore st is equal to 28. Okay, now if we're looking for angle y, alright, and this is why I stated both of the deductions from the midpoint theorem, because if you're looking for angle y, we're going to use the fact that qr is parallel to ST. How is that going to help us? Well, angle S is going to be equal to angle PQR. Alright, I've marked them on your drawing. So PQR and angle S, which is why they're going to be equal to each other. And the reason there, hopefully you can all recognize it by now, that's corresponding angles. And that's because... QR is parallel to ST. So angle S is equal to angle PQR. Can we work out angle PQR? All right. Well, if you look at your diagram, you see that you've got angle P is 40, angle R is 60. Therefore, using angles of a triangle, you can work out angle PQR. So angle PQR is going to be 180 minus angle P plus angle R. So that's going to be 180 minus P is 40, R is 60, so it's 180 minus 100. So therefore we get angle PQR is 80 degrees. So that's 80 degrees there. So therefore, since Y or angle S is equal to PQR, therefore Y will be equal to 80, and that's because it was corresponding with angle PQR. So this is question four. They say given parallelogram A, B, C, D with A, E and F, C. So that's just, A, E is just a line, F, C is just a line. They also tell you that A, E bisects angle A, bisects, remember, cuts in two equal bits, and then F, C bisects angle C, so F, C uh, also cuts angle C into two equal bits. They then ask you to write down all the interior angles in terms of y. Okay, so let's have a look at that part first before we look at part B, and I just remind you of what the properties of the palm are. All right, so the big piece of information they've given you here, well, two big pieces, they tell you that the big shape ABCD is a palm, so there's lots of things you know from that. We know that that means that AB is parallel to CD. How do we know that? We didn't make that up. It's one of the properties of a palm. BC is also parallel to AD, okay? We also know that the whole length of AB is equal to CD, and the whole length of BC is equal to AD. Okay, all follows from properties of a palm. They tell you that FC bisects, so it bisects, which means cuts in two equal pieces. So therefore, if FC bisects angle C, so if we call this C1 and C2, well, then C1 will be equal to C2. Similarly, they tell you that AE bisects angle A. So if we call this A1 and A2, and here they tell you that A1 is Y, then A2 is also going to be Y. All right. And they ask you to write down all the interior angles in terms of Y. So let's get started. Okay. First one that we can do quite easily is we can say, now, if you're going to write A1 and A2, make sure on your diagram sheet you indicate which one is A1 and A2. Otherwise, name your angles with the letters. So 
For example, this A2 would be B, A, E, or F, A, E. All right, I'm going to use A1 and A2 because it's obvious from the diagram. So the first simple one is angle A2 is equal to Y. Remember, statement has to be followed by a reason. The three upside down triangle dots, that means since. So A2 is equal to Y since it was given that AE bisects angle A. All right, so A2 is equal to Y. Then we look at the whole of angle C. Now remember, A, B, C, D is a palm. Okay? And in a palm, we know the opposite angles are equal. So angle C is equal to angle A is equal to 2Y. Why is it 2Y? Because A1 plus A2 is equal to 2Y. So therefore, angle C is equal to A is equal to 2Y. Reason? Opposite angles of palm. Okay, and I'm just abbreviating there to palm. So C is equal to A is equal to 2Y. But we know that um, that line FC bisects angle C. So we know that angle C is made up of C1 plus C2. And if they're both equal to 2Y, then we know bisecting it, we're going to get C1 is equal to C2 is equal to Y. All right, so therefore these two little pieces here are also going to be Y. Okay. All the interior angles, so we've only done A and C, we need the rest of them. Angle D is going to be 180 minus 2Y, and the reason for that is going to be co-interior angles. So angle D, so A plus D is equal to 180. That's co-interior angles. So therefore, we got that D is equal to 180 minus 2Y. All right. We can get B by saying B is equal to angle D because of opposite angles of a palm. So therefore, B is going to be 180 minus 2y. All right, so we've got that one. Okay, but we're not done. So we've only got the interior opposite angles. We also need all these little pieces in between. Okay, so angle E, if we call this one here, angle AED, that's going to be equal to y. And the reason angle AED is equal to y is because of alternate angle. So it's equal to A2 because of alternate angles. Alright, so if we look at your Z shape, there we go. So angle E is equal to angle A2 because of alternate angles. Alright, this angle here, angle um, A, well what do we want to call this? AEC, that's going to be 180 minus Y because of angles on a straight line. Okay. Similarly, we can find that angle F1, if we call it that, is going to be Y because of alternate angles. And then the one on the other side of it is going to be 180 minus Y because of angles on a straight line. Was it necessary to find all of these angles? Absolutely. And the reason for this is with geometry, a lot of the times you'll find that one question leads you on to the next one. So yes, we did have to find all of these angles because as you're going to see in the next question, we're going to use it. All right. And the next question says, prove that AF EC is a parallelogram. So the little piece in the middle, we need to prove that it's a palm. Now, guys, before you can even try or attempt to prove that it's a palm, you need to remember the properties of a palm. Because obviously, if you don't know the properties, then you can't uh, prove that it's a palm. It's as simple as that. 